What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about carbs and death. There was a recent study done and it was published in The Lancet, which is a very high-end journal, looking at the relationship between carbohydrate intake and all-cause mortality. So when we say all-cause mortality, that literally means death from any cause. You know, somebody gets hit by a car, that falls under it. But it can be a useful statistic to pick out trends. So they looked at carbohydrate intake ranging from like in the percentages in the 30s all the way up to the 70s in terms of percentage of calories. And then they looked at what were the rates of mortality and was there any association? And what they found was there was what they termed a U-shaped curve, meaning at low levels of carbohydrate intake, like down in the 40s and 30s, there was the highest rates of mortality. The lowest rate of mortality was actually around 55% of calorie intake from carbohydrate. And then it started to go back up, although the curve back up was not as sharp as the curve down, meaning even at high levels of carbohydrate intake, it was not as high of a rate of mortality as it was of low levels of carbohydrate intake. They also looked at the relationship at low carbohydrate levels of intake if they changed out animal fat or animal protein for more plant sources. And they found that when they did that, it actually reduced the rate of mortality. I don't think it got it quite as low as that 55% number, but it did lower it. That's it, right? We should all eat a balanced diet with 55% of calories coming from carbohydrates. Now, my personal bias says, this is great. Like this fits my personal bias. Balanced diets are the best for everybody and you should do that for your carbohydrate intake, you know. But I think there's more to the story here than is just told by the raw numbers of this study. Before we start going crazy and saying, well, this obviously shows that low carbohydrate diets are bad for you. On the whole, we're talking about at low carbohydrate intakes, a hazard ratio of, I think it was around 1.5. And the difference in lifespan was around four years at like low carbohydrate intake versus like 55%. When it was 55% versus high carbohydrate intake, like up and above 70% of of calories from carbohydrate, talking about a year's worth, give or take, of lifespan on average. So it sounds like from this research, there is a protective effect of carbohydrate intake on the risk of you dying. But there's more going on here than just that. There are several huge confounding variables in this study. And this isn't a knock on the study. We just have to understand why we should limit our interpretation of this study and proceed cautiously. Some of the biggest confounders in this study are one, smoking. So there is a 50% difference in the number of current smokers between the lowest intake of carbohydrate and the highest intake of carbohydrate. So amongst the lowest intake of carbohydrate, 33% were smokers, but at the highest intake of carbohydrate, there was only 22%. That's a big difference and it was statistically significant and it's almost a linear drop over the course of carbohydrate intake with the amount of smoking. There was also more former smokers amongst the lowest carbohydrate intake group versus the highest carbohydrate intake group. And again, it was kind of a linear drop as carb percentage from calories went up, rates of smoking went down amongst current and former smokers. If we look at the people who have never smoked, a 50% difference. So only 32% of people in the lowest carbohydrate group had never smoked, whereas in the highest carbohydrate group, almost half had never smoked, so 48%. Those are big differences, and we know smoking has a huge impact on mortality. So that's one confounding variable to keep in mind. Additionally, there was a small difference in the amount of exercise that was done between the lowest amount of carbohydrate and the highest amount of carbohydrate. So at the lowest amount of carbohydrate, only 15% of people exercised. At the highest, it was about 20%. And there was a pretty sharp uptick in terms of exercise. So at that middle range of carbohydrate where the death rates were the lowest, it was 19% of people had exercised. So again, smoking and exercise, there's some differences there. Fiber is also another potential confounding variable. We know that fiber has almost a linear inverse association with mortality. People in the lowest carbohydrate group, on average, ate about 13 grams of fiber per day. In the highest carbohydrate group, they ate 19 to 20 grams of fiber per day. Again, 
big confounding variables here. When they looked at the amount of animal fat in the low carb group, there were significantly higher amounts of animal fat versus the highest carbohydrate group. Animal fat tends to be saturated fat. And if you think about where most Americans get their animal fat from, it's a lot of processed meats, hamburgers, hot dogs, those sorts of things, not very healthy sources of fat. As I alluded to earlier, they also showed that in the lowest carbohydrate group, if you replace the animal sources of protein with more plant sources of protein, the rates of mortality went down. Now, a confounder to that is that they're having more plant sources of protein, they're probably increasing that fiber amount. So once again, there's many potential confounding variables here. I'm not attempting to dismiss this study. It is possible there is something to this, but what I'm saying is based on this study by itself, I am not prepared to say that low carbohydrate diets are dangerous. What I would say is if you're going to do a low carbohydrate diet, make sure you get plenty of fiber as much as you can so you're eating a lot of vegetables and make sure that you're not going crazy with saturated fat. There is a group of people out there now, mostly carnivore zealots, who will tell you that saturated fat doesn't matter and they will cherry pick studies to support their bias. But if we look at Mendelian randomization trials, of LDL cholesterol. What we see is almost a perfect association between lifetime exposure to LDL cholesterol and incidence of heart disease. We know that saturated fat will increase LDL cholesterol. Therefore, I'm not telling you that you should omit animal protein if you like to eat animal protein. What I would recommend is trying to use leaner cuts of animal protein. And if you want to do a higher fat diet, try filling in some of those fats from more unsaturated sources of fat or even plant-based sources of fat like avocados. I know each side, low carb, vegan, is gonna try and skew this study to fit their bias. What I would say is what I have said for a long time. Take care of the big bricks first. Make sure you control your calorie intake, your eating sufficient protein to support your goals, you're exercising, you're eating enough dietary fiber, you're sleeping enough, limit your drinking, don't smoke, limit your stress, and those are the big things. I think if you take care of those things, arguing over how much carbohydrate you consume is probably a moot point. Again, that's just my personal opinion, and the data may show that I'm wrong over time. But again, based off this data, with the amount of confounding variables in it, I don't feel comfortable saying that low carbohydrate diets in and of themselves are dangerous. All right guys, hope you liked this video. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you next week.